Pike County Physical Court called to order. Madam Clerk, I have a roll call of its members, please. Judge Rutherford. Present. Master Anderson. Here. Master Johnson. Here. Master Murphy. Here. Master Robinson. Here. Master Dotson. Here. Master Hare. Here. We'll now have Pledge of Allegiance led by Magistrate Murphy, a veteran. The last meeting, of course, was a lengthy meeting because we had two meetings in one. We had not had a meeting before. Uh, the, the previous previous meeting was canceled. But at uh, our last meeting, Magistrate Anderson and Magistrate Harris called my attention to questions concerning a project uh, of our solid waste department and removal of a dilapidated building in the Pond Creek area. It is part of the county uh, program to remove unsightly structures and fire hazards that endanger our citizens, hurt property values, and detract from the beauty of our county. The court adopted the county nuisance ordinance for these purposes. As county judge executive, I reviewed the project in question in detail. My staff and the Commissioner of Solid Waste, uh, Mr. Mullins, met the requirements of the ordinance, which were complied with completely, competently, and each step required and the protocol was followed. I am satisfied that the concerns raised at the last court meeting have been properly addressed and satisfied. I want to thank both of the magistrates for bringing their concerns to my attention so that I could assure the people of Pike County that work on their behalf is being performed as it should be. We have the jailer with us today. Uh, jailer, we're always glad for you to come. It is time for your budget, and I uh, thank Madam, uh, Madam Treasurer that uh, uh, you and I met with the, with the jailer and had a discussion with him, and I think you all are going to explain <laughs> uh, of what, what our situation is, and, and as in the past, uh, jailer, we're always glad for you to come before this body. Glad to be here, Judge. Uh, just uh, do what? I don't know. Okay. Me. This is uh, me and John met yesterday, and uh, this is just a proposed budget for the upcoming year. Just the formality of where his budget's to be presented to the fiscal court by April 1. So since we had a court meeting today, this is when we're submitted to the fiscal court to be included in our overall budget. You, Rodney, you and Rhonda worked on this, I mean, John worked on this together? Yes. You all said that? Okay. All right, well, I'll make a motion. We acknowledge receipt of the budget. Thank you. Have a motion to second. Have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Rutherford. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Scott. The adoption of a resolution, a proclamation for April and Pride Cleanup Month. Do I have a motion? This, I'll make a motion. The spring one, we have two each year. Motion. This is a paint up, clean up, fix up one that the Pike County uh, government, Pike County Physical Court, and Pride, uh, the, the partners on this together with a lot of help of the community clubs and the people of the county. Second. I have a motion to have a second. Madam Clerk, have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Rutherford. Yes. We have the adoption of a resolution proclaiming April Autism Awareness Month. I want to say that about uh, Jeannie, seven years ago, almost uh, seven years ago, uh, two ladies inspired you and other people in, in, in our office to give some attention to a disease that 
very little few people have heard about in this country. And at that time, it was autism. It was, uh, the first one we heard was a lady, I think, over at Coon Creek, committed justice, and we had a lady who worked for us, lived in an urban area in, a, in where she had medical attention for a daughter at a very young age. And the daughter was in the, and is in the elementary school here at Pikeville and a, a normal child. Since that, a lot of things have transpired in this Commonwealth from this walk. Uh, Jeannie uh, handled it. She put together a committee, and that committee is met each year, and each year they have a walk. That's grown into four, five, six hundred people who attend, and it is uh, one, uh, one out of 50 ch children are affected in this country by autism. What happened after we started this walk uh, led to Senator Jones and our two representatives that time, Hall and Combs, to file legislation in the Kentucky General Assembly. They didn't get everything they asked for, but they did get insurance to diagnose this disease. There, they are in this session, legislation filed by them and joined by by Senator Turner from Floyd County in regard to, to this issue. Since that time, the hospital, which is Highlands, has opened a unit at Highlands Hospital on Alzheimer's. In the, in the country today, and I know you all watch the national television, autism is something that people are becoming aware of because if they get a child and it gets attention at a very young age, then that child can be, a, a, most of the time, can be a normal child as they grow into adulthood and be productive. So, uh, Jeannie, I commend you and the committee. You've met and met. Uh, we're ready. Inclement weather don't bother us. We got a good prediction on the weather, Doug, I hope, for Saturday. But we always move inside uh, over to the Expo Center. We partnership with the city of Pikeville and uh, we partnership with them, and, and, uh, and we, we have it. And it's very touching. It's a moment for us uh, and for Jeannie and the committee. But David Taylor and uh, Rick, Richie Rhodes, a former employee of this court, uh, Richie has a young daughter with autism. And he told this songwriter a story about his child. And that songwriter wrote a song that, uh, that was recorded by this group. Food City, one of the sponsors of this event, Food City had that recorded in a recording studio on a disc with, with other religious type music. That is for sale in every Food City store in Tennessee, Virginia, and Kentucky. And I've seen it in different stores, and I'm sure you have too. The money from that comes and goes into autism. So uh, it, it, this has been very successful, and it, it is, it, it brings, uh, it, it is a way that these young children can be assisted, and the, the grandparents and parents and the families, they, they come out, they can network, they can talk to others who are going through what they're going through, and uh, it is, it is a great day uh, for, for these families and these blessed children. So it's, uh, we certainly are glad, and I need a motion to a resolution proclaiming April Autism Awareness Month. Motion. I have a motion, Master Robbins, second for Magistrate Murphy. Have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dodson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Rick. You have in your packet a, a uh, and we, we spent probably 20 minutes, and of course, on the museum situation and the fact that, that, the, that we wanted to not only save the museum, but to enhance the museum, and talking about the partnership between the city and county that they had come together, and that we had a location, and, and I think everything was about resolved, was resolved the last meeting, uh, but only thing wasn't resolved that the, the, the city has had, had recommended in my meeting with the city manager, 
And uh, I think that we ought to have a joint board and that, that they ought to be. And the fact that the University of Pikeville and uh, in my meeting with, uh, with the Chancellor, former Governor Paul Patton, and the fact that Governor Patton said that the university would have liked to have taken uh, this museum, but that there's just no place on their campus or anywhere they could find to house it. But he further said that they would assist this museum with interns in the future and would be part of helping to make sure that all of these artifacts which need to be protected and saved and displayed for the people. The city would said they would take it and they looked at space they had in the Expo Center. It gave us no more space than we had in the train station where it was. So we have, we moved that, we need a board in place. So one of the members on that board in meetings with the city uh, between the county attorney's office, the city attorney, and the county attorney. Uh, this was drawn up, and the one member was added to the board, and that was the University of Pikeville member, and which made, I think, nine members uh, uh, that on that board to operate, to be the oversight. As we know from the last meeting, it will be operated by Pike County Tourism Board, who will hire uh, the curator, and they will operate it at the same hours that they'll be open at their office on the boulevard. So it puts a member of the board of Pikeville Tourism and Pike County Tourism also on this board, along with three appointed uh, and by the county and three appointed by the city. Are there any questions in regard to putting the board together to to make sure that the that this museum uh, is, is successfully moved and operated. Judge, I have a, a recommendation. I don't know how far to go, but I, it's an ideal. You know, the new Pike County Library we're building over here. Uh, We've already on explored the, uh, that. They have let no, me, you know, no room for it. Don't That's have one no. the first places we went to. The what now? That's the first place that we went to when they found out that they had to move. That's the first one we had a conversation with. Looks like an awful big building to me. I don't know what they going to have in it. That's the first one we had a conversation well, with. Well, that just, you know, I but just I had an idea, but it, that it that don't. That is a good idea and a good question to bring up and a good question to ask. But the, any other questions in regard to it or statements? If not, have a motion. Have a motion. Have a second. Have a second. Second one, Master Robinson, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Ruthie. Yes. Judge, we didn't approve the minutes. Minutes. We need approval of the minutes of the last meeting of March the 18th. You have it in your packet. Uh, I have gone over, the, the Jeannie and I have gone over the minutes, found them to be correct, and if, if you don't have any additions or corrections, I'll ask for a motion, please. Okay. Have a motion, Master Murphy. I have a second, Master Johnson. Have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Harris. We got good news from Perfection Group, and it was good news as we've seen the weather today. Uh, you're aware that the cooling tower out back uh, was not included in the first package. And it was, to me, a misunderstanding or a mistake. And when uh, we was in Louisville, the Perfection was a vendor down there, and they're coming up tomorrow, I think, Jeannie, is it tomorrow? And uh, they informed me that the money that we've saved already on this program and project uh, is, uh, it looks real good. They had looked and uh, they are well within the money. And of course, at the next court meeting, we will ask them, Jeannie, to come back, make a presentation to the court and tell us where we stand. But uh, 
since they didn't get to the cooling tower out back and they rebuilt the one in the front, uh, since they, they have, uh, and they're in the process now of getting one ordered and get, it takes about eight or 10 weeks. We're worried about, and you can see from your pictures on your monitor, the condition of that one out back. We're wondering with this hot weather coming to make sure that we have air conditioning. And that not only, and that is in the building where we're, where we're getting ready to construct. And by the way, in regard to the facility that uh, money has been appropriated for for the uh, for the drug rehabilitation center uh, that application is going into the attorney general through the attorney general's office to access some of the 20 million dollars available for construction and we hope that we're going to be able to announce within the next few days that that the total project of three million has has been funded and that we can move completely on and do phase one and phase two. We've already authorized phase one in regard to that. But you can see the condition of this. They assured me in Louisville that, uh, that, that they was going to keep this cooling tower running as soon as they as soon they get up here and they could service it. Terry Rogers was tickled to death when I got back because he had been scared to death that we were not going to be able to have cooling uh, over in the jail and, and for those inmates. So with this weather opening up, it's great news that they have it together. KCO has, they worked with KCO. They have KCO's approval on it and, and in the next, uh, and they'll be up tomorrow to update it. Jenny, what time is that? If any of the magistrates are, wanna come, they're welcome to come. And, uh, and they will give us a complete update on this tower. You're talking about something that cost uh, uh, somewhere, uh, Dan, around eighty-six or $85,000 uh, that don't cost the county anything because it's where the, where the utility bill comes down and that's paid for it within a, a, a period of time. I believe it was 15 years. So <clears throat> this is great news for us because it was a worry that we had. And <clears throat> so this, this resolves that. And as I come back, I thought Terry Rogers was gonna jump up and down so much, Carl, that he, uh, he clapped his hands together and said, I've, I've been losing sleep at night, worrying that that's not gonna be able to make it until uh, something is done. So. Uh, th this and this, this unit been there ever since this building was built 21, 22 years ago now, and it, it needed to be uh, needed to be changed and and it's a blessing that we're going to be able to change it without the penny with our budget situation spending money. Judge, how did this get by the the people that's putting this stuff in and Terry Rogers hit being in this kind of condition? Why wasn't what, it taken up at happened? the time? What happened, Hillman, that the one in the front got listed and that one was supposed to be the one done first by the last engineer that came here for, for that company. And then when they got into the construction pier, time run out on them and they knew they was gonna have to come back. So they make arrangements now to come back. But you would have thought the condition this thing is in that they would have called it first because they were looking at everything else in the bill and now we're going to have to pay 80 some thousand extra we don't pay anything well that money that we're paying them would have been money in our budget that we saved from our electric bill so we're we're still paying it you know either way you're going to look at your it. money back from your electric bill because it lowers your electric bill so much but we could have took that money that we had lowered from our electric bill and put it toward our general fund can't we you can after 15 years oh it's got to wait 15 budget. years after 15 years, your million dollar three contract is up, I understand. Jenny, am I given the correct time in 15 years? Well, not the uh, perfection group. Yes, it was 15 years that basically the electric's supposed to go down enough to make the offset for the lease payments. Correct. But that really, might... I'm not, I'm not done an analysis on it to see, but I don't think that we've saved the 119000 so far this year that we paid on the 
They've already t told me that we've saved more money than we were supposed to save. And Madam Treasurer, you're welcome to come to the meeting in the morning. Judge, I'd like for the next court meeting to have a, a printout on how much we have saved, John. I've Can asked, we do that? I just said earlier I asked Jeannie to invite them to come to the next meeting and to give the court a complete update. They couldn't come today, but they, they're scheduled they schedule here tomorrow. But I've already managed to Dodson. I feel just like you do. They need to come through the court, and they need to have their figures. They can put them up on the monitor, Jeannie, and they can show us exactly what has been saved. That's what we need to do and show the public what we've saved. That's correct. Because there's been a lot of questions on what we've spent. That's exactly right. So that, that is that. Next, we have awarding of the bids. Um, I have one bid to present to the court. It's uh, bid number 19 for 2014. It's the Big Creek Fire Department Community S Center renovation building. Um, received three bids. Uh, first bid was Smith Construction of Canada. Uh, total bid price, $28,000 even. Uh, the second bid was from Dameron Enterprise Incorporated of Canada. Total bid price, $27,610. The third bid was from Larry Young of Varney, uh, total bid price $17,500. And my recommendation would be to award the bid to Larry Young, having the lowest evaluated bid price of $17,500. I need to ask a question that is well within the budget because it had $35,000 left. Am I correct? That's well within the budget, and Bobby, that gives them more money in regard to what they wanted to do on the outside. If you remember when, when we was over there and met with, with Johnny Harris and, and Chief Green. Uh, Master Harris, am I correct on that? They had $35,000. I'm not, uh, I'm not was, sure what the renovation is. $35,000 in the budget uh, to renovate the inside and, and get ready for the community center and for the training center. Right, uh, that, so that sounds then they right. They wanted to, me. to build a, they wanted to build out back, uh, Bobby Branham, when we was over there, and w we suggested they get their bid first and make sure that they was they had enough money to renovate it, so it could be used for a community center. So you need a, a motion to uh, accept the bid. Master Harris, have a mo I'll, motion to accept I'll the bid. I make a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Have a second. Uh, have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson, yes. Master Johnson, yes. Master Murphy, yes. Master Robinson, yes. Master Dotson, yes. Master Harris, yes. Judge Ruth Griffin, yes. Judge Pruitt, would you and Bobby uh, uh, get with the with the board or with with the the business manager for the board, Johnny Hire, yes, and uh, and and the bar chief, Mr. Green, who had, who had recently had a lot of illness and he had to spend some time in the hospital on the blood clots and had stents put in. So I hope he's back uh, back uh, to the job with a Kinder, I believe, with the company that he works for. But we, we need to go ahead and move on on that project, get it ready. And Carl, that means that sometime next year or when we can with our budget that you need to look at your volunteer program to do a test over there like you're doing at Lower Johns Creek and Joe's Creek and like you're going to do at Mouth Card. You need to add that to your list in the future to have a volunteer and a to see about sometime in the future when money would be available to establish a senior citizen center in these uh, three locations. Next, we have Magistrate's Road Work. Let me, let me, before I take Master Anderson's motion, is introduce Shane Hall to you. You wonder who this fellow is sitting up here? Shane is a is an attorney here in Pikeville. Uh, Shane is, uh, Shane is, is special to a lot of people, but in the music field, he can do a daggone pretty good job of picking. <laughs> he, he is a, uh, a uh, lawyer that's well respected here. He is assistant county attorney uh, special to be here. We know that 
that uh, John Doug Hayes, the assistant county attorney of the bad luck he's had and the operation that he just has gone through, he goes back to Dr. Thursday and he hopes that he, he would, could, could be released to come back to work. But Shane, you, 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 you've just been here just a, a day, a day and a half, and in a short time, you've, you've understood what the, it means to the county attorney to give advice and try to keep us within the framework of the Kentucky statute and to make sure that we, many things, look out for people, property rights, and right on and on and on. And I appreciate the attention that you give and, and working with Judge Pruitt and working with my staff and, and, uh, and, and you and I both talking to the county attorney and, and he, was, he was not available and out of town. So uh, we're certainly glad that you're here with us today. Thank you, Judge. I appreciate it and I've enjoyed it very much. Uh, we have a motion by Magistrate Anderson. Do we have a second? Have a second with Magistrate Murphy. We'll have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Dotson? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Judge Ruth? Yes. Next, we have Magistrate comments. Magistrate Anderson. Judge, just one thing real quick. I never did get my financial disclosure form. We discussed it a couple months ago, and I don't know who I can who has those, but I think we were going to try to get those current, up to date. I never did get one. Jeannie, you aware of what he's talking about? We all Does understand John? the disclosure form. Does Rose have some? Okay. You take it to, to Rose, those come to you. No, they go to Leland's office. The, as Jeannie just said, they go to the Pike County Clerk's office. They don't come back to us. You have some, Rosie? Okay. Uh, I'll run by. i got to come up here tomorrow anyway, and I'll pick it up. That's all I have. Now, and thank you for bringing that up, because every, every one of us need to make sure that gets down there. For sure. I think our motion was we were just, any, any, any that we hadn't filed, we were just going to get current. Is that, I think that's what we discussed. It's probably before Jim came on board, actually. I, so. I, I apologize. I've been here uh, several weeks, and I don't know. Anything. Yeah, I, I think it was before you came on board. I think so. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll run by and I get I think one it more. was. I think it was meeting before. Okay, thanks. But thank you for bringing that up. Master Johnson. Uh, I, <coughs> up in my district, we've been out, me and my foreman, trying to get some of them creeks cleaned out where all trees in it and stuff and uh, there's some washed out places and then some we've been putting some gravel from potholes we hope pretty soon it gets back so we mountain enterprise and open up so we start fixing some out holes and may <coughs> might do a little blacktop that's all i got you yeah Mar i want to sell this hat <laughs> I, I paid two dollars and a half for it uh, after that ball got over five dollars for it and i went deep <laughs> Mayor Johnson, I noted for the governor of West Virginia had declared April, Bobby, pothole month, and he had ordered every pothole in the state of West Virginia to be filled with blacktop. <laughs> so, so not only was our road department uh, and the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet roads filling the problem with salt, uh, West Virginia, too, was filling the problem with salt to, to the point that had the governor said, I can't take it anymore, I want them all filled up. Too many calls are coming in to the governor's office. Uh, next is Magistrate Murphy. Yes, I want to give the clerk uh, a road to give to Frank when he comes back, the road commissioner. Madam Clerk, make that part of the, the record, please. Another thing, Judge, I met with, Ronnie and I met with two guys up Gibson Bottom on Elkhorn Creek yesterday. And that bridge, you go over to the bottom, services about six families knowing it's in the road system and the bridge is in terrible shape and what they told me when donna was judge donna dameron and she come up there and had paperwork showing that there's going to be a new bridge built and i was going to ask you see if you could check and see if there's any paperwork still left of that or anything and uh frank's not here but i was going to ask him to see if we could get frank, the state frank, to help I us I'm on sorry, a bridge but or i didn't tell you all frank is sick today 
said he was feeling better, said to tell you all he hoped he'd be back out to, in the morning, and if you needed to give him a call. But that bridge is in bad shape. I may get you to come up and look at it, too, and everything. You need to make a note of that. I'll do a memo to Frank, and we'll get the bridge inspected. Gibson and Bottom Bridge on Elkhorn Creek there. And, we, and if, it's, if it's getting dangerous, we need to give it to, give it to our attention right quick. Good shape. Magistrate. Judge, I've got a few things. I uh, had a lot of calls about our Pike County housing buildings over there. I guess there's some problems that arose this week, and I just want to let the public know that I was unaware of what was going on. And I guess you've probably been getting some calls on it, too, on the attendant that was managing the, the two facilities, I guess. He appeared on the news last night as the most wanted man in West Virginia. And uh, he had been doing some taxes for people, I think, and having them, or Mingo County, not West Virginia, Chris. But, uh, but that's still a pretty good sized county, and I'd hate to be wanted it is, in any It county. is, Hilma, it is. But anyway, he, he was filling out taxes, they said, for people, and, and having them put to his account, what the news said. And I guess he's on the run, and, and I don't know who's managing them facilities. I know it's in my district in your county, and I didn't know whether you was aware of it or not. The housing, housing director and the board are well aware, and they're taking care of the problem. Well, I just want to let the people know that, Correct. that you know, we had no control over who was appointed to the board. That, was, that was by, Correct. I mean, the, the, the man running it, the board appointed him. Correct. That's correct. So, uh, you're aware of it? Yes. Okay. Uh, another thing is that uh, it's a bad time to be running for election with these, these potholes. I'm, uh, they're beating all of us to death with them. <laughs> and ain't a thing we can do about it. And I just want to let the people know that as soon as we can, we will be a trying to, to take care of some of them. But I hear every day. Our roads are terrible, our roads, and that's, it's, they're true. You know, we put so much salt on them this year that we burn them up, and we've tore our roads up so bad, and there's no money to repair them to, to do the, the blacktop, and all we can do is maybe fill in a few holes and try to, to, to make it better, and I was wanting to talk to Frank today. There's a coal company that uh, we need to get in touch with over on Pawpaw. The road is in pretty bad shape over there, and and uh, we, we just need to go and talk to them and see if we can get some assistance on repairing that road because I don't have enough money in my budget to, to, to pave it. It's, it's, it's really bad. And uh, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. I don't know if you got any calls on it or not. Let's hope that the legislature, uh, if that it comes together between the House and Senate and the gas tax can be capped and the gas cap, they, they've already got it in, and they're in discussions of whether or not they're going to raise it. If it stays the way that it was passed in the House, then we're going to get adequate money to do blacktop, and it's going to bring a, infuse a lot of money into the county budget uh, uh, through the Transportation Cabinet. The Flex uh, uh, received a call uh, uh, last Thursday, I believe it was, and I uh, talked to Hatch, and our flex things was due by, I think, tomorrow. Hatch assured me that that, that has to be done online, and that they, they said that it would completely, all of ours would be in, uh, and that we, we met their deadline, so that we would be eligible for the flex money that Governor Shear has in this budget, again this year, and also, I believe, they want some car over money and flex from last year. So hopefully, yep. hopefully, Master Dodson, and you're right, uh, the amount of money we had to spend on salt, then the damage, uh, we certainly have problems out there. We, we, we've been saying for years that you can't get elected to office in Pike County because 99% of the roads are blacktop by, by talking about blacktop, but now you're talking about filling up potholes, and uh, we know that we got them. We was in Louisville, and I hit one in downtown Louisville, and uh, 
Pat says, here in Louisville, there's an awful deep pot of I said, Pat, they use salt here. It's like they do up home. It goes to the bottom. So the well, judge, each one of us probably used thirty some to forty thousand dollars worth of salt this winter, and that's that should be enough to do everybody. But you know, it's just Let's you know just we can't we change it. From we can't change it, but we have to deal with the house it. The but uh, the flex money, I talked to Rick Long last time we were in Lexington a couple of weeks ago, or Louisville, and he said mine and one other was all he had received, and he said we're ready to to turn loose of that, but you guys have got to get it to us. And he assured me I, that everything, everybody was in. Well, maybe they got them in this past week, I don't know, or, or, or last week, but that's what he told me in the meeting in, the, in, in Louisville that we had. He said he only had mine and one more, and he said we're ready to turn loose of the money, and if the other ones don't want it, then we'll send you your part. Now, right. you know, if, if, if Chick and them don't need any of it, I'll, I can use it all. But, uh, I tell you what, yeah, but I got one road up there I went and checked out last week. You're going up in a small holler, it chug a hose so bad. I thought I had one leg long, one short, but I was going up there. <laughs> but we'll fix it when we get some blacktop. But Chet, we'll fix it, you know, if uh, we get some money. But I guess the plant's supposed to open up about the middle of uh, the month, isn't it, Frankie? Do you, you haven't talked to any of them? I think they told Randy this hopefully get the blacktop plane open up early so we can start patching up some holes. But uh, another thing. Also remember, Hillman, that the next pot of flex money after July 1 will be available. It's 292000 14, 15, 15 year. 12, 13, and 13, 14 year. About uh, 500 and some thousand. Well, he said it was ready, and I think they were supposed to meet this week or so and, yes. and, and turn it loose. That's what and, they called it this week. That's what they called last week on. But, Judge, uh, yeah. our, uh, we had a meeting. I, I, I got in there late, and, and I guess you're, you're probably going to explain to the people, you know, we've talked about. About 194 and 632 for several years here about upgrading and improvements. And I was so glad to get a call there the other day from from your staff and, and said they were having a meeting at the District 12 office and uh, had some good news. They said they would have the, the final plan in November. Is that right? Correct. And uh, go ahead and tell them about Finally, that. Finally, after all the complaints, uh, the Kentucky Department of Tra the Transportation Cabinet led a contract to a firm to do a study in regard to temporary safety and for, for reconstruction of that road sometime in future years. And as Magistrate Dotson said, I thought it was a good meeting. I think it was a meeting that went into detail. Uh, I think they, they I think, we already knew the danger of this road and the people that got killed. Uh, I can remember Master Dotson coming out of Peter Creek when the years ago, when that road had been constructed and the principal, his name was Phillips, was killed on that road and I was blocked in traffic and he was the principal of Phelps High School. And since that time, they've been 25 killed on that road. During this study period they're doing, I believe there was nine and during the first phase of the study period, I think there was three, she said, the lady who gave the presentation. Dan, I believe that we have a copy of that presentation, that the disk that they sent us on, on their PowerPoint that they, that they did down there that day. But I thought for the first time that an area in Pike County that probably mined more coal and put more money into the coffers of of state government uh, because they get one half the severance tax off the top all these years since 1972, which is billions of dollars that's gone into the state budget and to be spent in all the other counties. And yet we have, we have the county covered with four lanes, a contract out uh, on, on another section of 460. Uh, we know that 119, 23 is completed and uh, 
it's a uh, it was it finally that to give some attention to it we were disappointed last year when we had six million dollars to to work on the, on a portion of that road on i-66 and then they moved the money on us you remember that so but this was great news i, I know that magistrate dotson and all of us who was there with all this interest on this dangerous road uh, and they are going to the signage, the road, as far as safety will be changed. We also discussed uh, the six-year plan, the Deskins uh, curve, which was to be taken out, uh, and where that stood, and they brought us up to date on it, and they will be, be able to let a contract on that this year, and they're in design to take that, that dangerous curve out and the way it sloped and where I noticed on that chart she had where they would have a death on that curve. The first phase that they showed us was to the Kellogg's plant, which we know what that means to the county and the people that it employs. The second phase was of the rest of the road on over to Phelps. We, they also displayed for us that even had, in future years, a bypass around Phelps that they had, uh, had proposed, uh, the engineers from, the, from Frankfurt and the district office. But uh, finally, finally, and uh, I know that uh, uh, maybe people get tired of hearing uh, Magistrate Dotson, myself, and others, uh, every court meeting we have, talk about that dangerous road over there. But folks, right now, the coal industry is the lowest it's ever been. But about the only place I see trucks, Master Dotson moving, is in that particular area. So they, they're still mining coal, still sending their severance tax, and the minerals tax, there are a lot of, a lot of wells in that area, of the 6,500 plus wells in this county of natural gas wells. There, there are many of those wells in Peter Creek and, and that drilled, and uh, so it's about time that the Transportation Cabinet give their attention to a, a, a dangerous piece of road in a county where they've left people out and they can't get out, they can't get out of there safely to come to their county seat or go west or go to Lexington, Louisville, or to their state capital. So hopefully, as Magistrate Dotson said, that this is beginning, that they will go ahead with their phase one and that they will do what's in the six-year plan and then move forward on it. Magistrate Dotson. Thank you, Judge. Uh, last thing I have, Judge, is we had a real, real good meeting on our four-wheeler meeting. Uh, you know, I announced at last court meeting that we were going to meet at Phelps uh, Courthouse. and. Uh, had about 60 people there and try to try to do a, a ride somewhere around uh, the first part of May. And uh, we've got another meeting set up for uh, April the 10th over here at Town Hall. And uh, hopefully after that one, we're going to try to meet up at Elkhorn City. But we've got a lot of people that's interested in seeing this happen. And uh, I think, you know, we will continue to see a lot of support for this trail system. I'm getting a lot of calls each day about it that, that people are wanting to, wanting to try to get started doing some businesses. We had people there that night was, was ready to build a, a bed and breakfast and some cabins and, and some uh, shops to work on the four-wheelers as we get people to come in. And I think it's our only chance that we're gonna have right now to draw people in is to is to promote this trail and, and try to get it through the legislators and and, and see if we can't get something uh, going. And uh, like I say, we're meeting again on uh, the 10th of uh, April over here at City Hall. And I'd like to invite everybody that would would have any interest in it to to show up. And hopefully, it uh, you or somebody from your staff okay. may maybe be there. Jenny, when do we meet with Pocahontas on the one that's what's the date? Wednesday the 16th, Magistrate Dodson, uh, be a meeting. Where is that meeting going to be? It'll be in our conference room or in our conference room? 
We meet with Pocahontas in regard to phase one of the one on Callaway. Is that where it's located? Yes, it's Callaway. Uh, Callaway. It's over your way, Callaway. And, and also, hopefully, we'll be able to give you an update to, to Charles Carlton on the one we're looking at in US 23. Uh, hopefully in the future in the near future we can give an update on that to, to that that is we know the property is there the problem that we've had all the time from out of state land holding companies and and we're, we're just not like west virginia they had seven property owners in boone and logan and mingo county we had 300 to get out of peter creek over to mouth guard so but we are blessed to have as our people can get income from the royalties in regard to, to coal and, and their natural gas. But on the other hand, more of our property is owned by out of state because we're such a big county. And then having said that, more of our land is owned by the local people than any other county in the Commonwealth. So we're on both sides of that issue. But uh, thank you for the update, Magistrate Dotson. You're welcome, Judge, and and you know I think we had uh, some people from the coal companies there that was really uh, wanting to, to get on board and help us, and uh, I think we've got a good start. And uh, you know all them property owners that we're talking about, if we can just get some kind of a uh, agreement that we will be able to uh, protect their property, and uh, maybe issue some little seals like West Virginia does. And, uh, you know, the company also told me that, that they was willing to put 5% royalties up to support this trail system off of the coal that they run. And, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good little chunk of money if we can get some kind of commitment like that to put toward buying insurance and doing things for the trail. And, uh, you know, I, I just think we need to continue to, to work on it. And, and with 5% uh, of what coal they run, I, I'm sure that would be, uh, I said they'd talk to you about it. Have they offered you anything like that? Didn't, they talked about it, but didn't, no figure was ever mentioned. No it's 5%. Percent. No, no percentage was ever mentioned. Well, they've come up with, uh, he told me, 5%. About the company that talked to us, did not own any properties. They only had leases on coal. True. They they got leases on the on the coal. Yeah, but they uh, as long them. I guess as they they are able to mine it. I don't know how long the lease will last. Mm -hmm. But but they don't own any real estate, and they couldn't give us permission to even come on their property. But I thought it was awful nice of them to, to offer five percent royalty on what coal they run. Thank you for the update, Mayor Hart. Judge, I have a, a couple things. One, I want to echo the, what some of the other magistrates have said about the pothole situation. Um, we're keenly aware of it and going to be working on it just as soon as we possibly can, as soon as the uh, plants open back up. Um, we actually had a petition from Road Fork for you know to patch the potholes there on on Road Fork, uh, and uh, you know I want, you, I want those folks to know uh, for sure that we are going to get on that just as soon as we possibly can. Um, the other issue uh, that I've, uh, another matter that I wanted to bring up is the auditions, uh, Hillman, for the, the uh, Hatfield-McCoy play. Uh, I saw where they were getting ready to start the auditions for the, uh, the Blood Song, the uh, outdoor drama at, uh, on Blackberry this year. So I just want to encourage everybody who's interested in, in drama and the performing arts to, uh, to uh, come down and and uh, audition for the, uh, the the play over the summer. It was a success last year, and we're hoping that it'll grow and become a bigger thing. Uh, Hillman has done a great job uh, promoting that in, uh, on Blackberry and throughout the county and, and outside the county, actually. Uh, and uh, we had real good participation last year, and I'd like to see that grow and become a real part of, uh, of, our, uh, of our community. Um, Harris, on that same issue, Jeannie, do we have set at the request of the coal company who made the parking lot available to us, do we have set on the calendar to have a have a uh, uh, to have a ceremony over there at their request? If not, that needs to be set on the calendar. Oh. And mm -hmm. uh, with with Mike Blackburn. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> Magistrate Harris. Yeah. And, and Judge, I, I too was at the uh, ATV meeting, and I just want to compliment him. And he ran a, ran a pretty good meeting that night with a lot of uh, a lot of four wheel uh, riders there, and and it was a good discussion, open discussion. I think we had a lot of there was a lot of good points brought up, and I think everybody has a little better understanding and a little better idea about how we can go forward and, and uh, the direction that we need to go. So I just want to compliment him on on that. Uh, yeah, the last issue I wanted to bring up was the, uh, the Belfry High School has started a tennis team. And they, of course, Belfry High School does not have tennis courts. So it's kind of tough to have a tennis team without tennis courts. But we do have some very nice courts at Hardy. And they've asked if they could be reserved for their benefit during the season so that they can practice and, and uh, under the deeds that we got from Ford Motor Company to build that park the they put in that deed that Belfry High School gets the first use of that park okay that's well, in the deed that answers the uh, that the answers question then question. so we'll we'll put up a we'll I wish I had the money to fix it I'd, I'd like to uh, but anyway, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and if it's all right with the uh, court, I'll make a motion that we'll put up a sign that just says that the Belfry High School tennis team would have priority on the tennis courts. So that gives everybody the it's fair to those that come up and play tennis. They don't we, we don't have to ex pull out a copy of the deed and explain to them that that so. Bobby, would you come to a microphone since we're on Pike TV so that they can tell what you're talking about? They actually take the tennis coach and they've got the certain hours posted and I think it down there it was like five to seven or something for Monday, Tuesday, or three days a week in certain months and they went ahead and put the, the well, sign they right schedule on the around and that took care of it down there. They have their schedule set out. They had their schedule, and uh, your tennis, normally the high school tennis matches are from about March through the end of the school. Right, March through so May. So they only had them reserved at a certain right. few months, and it, they had it right on their little signs there. Right. And I don't it think they're, good. I don't think they can actually play games there because there's only two courts. I think they have to have at least three or four courts in order to have a, a match but they do use it for practice and well, a and practice so that's, that's their yeah. practice court. So I I make a motion that we install a sign there just letting people know that that's Thank you. reserved. We don't have any we do not have any That's a that's a well, motion. I'll put that in the form of a motion. Chris, we've got a, another one over that Blackberry if if the school could come up with some money to to refurbish it. You know, the kids at Belfry live in Blackberry. They'd be welcome to use it. It's a nice uh, place. It just needs to be resurfaced, and I don't have the money to do it. You, you have to have, in order to have a match, you have to have three or four courts together so that all the different, uh, the different age group, uh, different, uh, different players can play, uh, you know. So, uh, but what my motion was, Judge, that we just install a sign there sure. to let the public know that it's, no, that it is reserved for the school. I have a motion by Master Hart to have a second. Have a second, Master uh, Dodson. Have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dodson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. Yes. That's all I have, Judge. Uh, next, we'll go to the treasurer's business. Madam Treasurer. Authorize any necessary transfers and interfund transfers to pay the bills, payroll, health, and life insurance. I have a motion. Got a motion, Master Johnson. I have a second, Master Robinson. I have a roll call vote, please. Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dodson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Rutherford. Yes. Acknowledge receipt of previously approved transfers and interfund transfers for February 4th, 2014 and February 18th, 2014. Do I have a motion? Motion to Motion, Matter Murphy. Second, Matter Johnson. Madam Clerk, have a roll call vote. Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dotson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. Yes. Acknowledge receipt of the Treasurer's February 2014 financial statement. Do I have a motion? motion. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Master Robinson, have a roll call vote, please. 
Master Anderson. Yes. Master Johnson. Yes. Master Murphy. Yes. Master Robinson. Yes. Master Dodson. Yes. Master Harris. Yes. Judge Rufferton. Yes. Authorized registration fees, which are $35 each for Charles Carlton and Jimmy Dale Sanders to attend the Big Sandy Watershed Conference 2014 on April the 11th, 2014 at the Briggs Interstate Park. Motion. Got a motion, Mayor Anderson, I have a second. Mayor Robinson, I have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dotson. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Judge Ruth. Yes. Authorize that the following check be written at the time that funds are received back from the Commonwealth of Kentucky on the Cabinet for Families and Children at Phelps in the amount of six thousand eight hundred dollars. I have a motion. Have a, have a second. second. Mr. Murphy, have a roll call vote, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mr. Dotson. Yes. Mr. Harris. You abstain. Judge Rutherford. Yes. I have no further business, Judge. And we don't have any personnel today, which is very unusual. But as you know, there's not a big turnover in government or any jobs, Shane, because of our present economy in, in the county. So, but we don't have anything. At Judge, Hart. one thing before we leave, I'd like to uh, recognize Christian Markham here, who is uh, one of our uh, young, young people in the community that's interested in government, and uh, he's president of the Young Democrats Club uh, here in Pike County. I want to acknowledge him being uh, at the meeting, and it's great to see young people getting involved in government and, and in politics, and it's a, it's a as, as you're doing, encouraging I sign. Before we got started today, because uh, very much interested, very much interested. Uh, I know that uh, mm -hmm. uh, I was highly impressed by this young group when, when Secretary Rhymes was up to the library, if you remember for that meeting, and that they, they had the group uh, sitting at the head table and you was one of them. And it was very impressive. And uh, as Marjorie Harris said, uh, that young people need to get involved. Uh, but, uh, Christian's doing a great job of going around to the high schools and getting, the, getting them organized and interested in government. And it's so important for us to have, like, have an outreach program to young people because they need to know what our local government, local, you know, that there are, it's not just CNN and Fox News and MSNBC and CNBC, that there's actually some local, local people that are involved, in, and it's great to see that, and great to see Christian here and involved in, in government. So thank you for being here. We are partnershiping, Magistrate Harris, with the Board of Education and a talk with the superintendent uh, the week before last in regard to Youth Government Day a Keiko and NACO uh, thing that goes on throughout the country. And we're, look, we're trying to get a date before school goes out to, to bring these youth leaders from the high schools. Uh, I think most of them are juniors or seniors. And uh, they will come and work with every commissioner, every county official. Hopefully, we're going to meet. And Judge Pruitt is handling this with, with uh, Mrs. Stanley, I think, at the school board. And uh, they're supposed to have a meeting, I think, this week or next week, and to get organized and to, to, as, to bring these young people in so they can get a feel, as you're doing today, of, of how their government and how transparent it is. Uh, we're, we're on Pike TV going into 24,000 homes in this county and, ca and the other surrounding counties from Pike TV, that how transparent government has got today. Uh, our budget work, work sessions are, are transparent in the open. People know exactly where their budget stands. They don't have to take somebody else's word for it. They, they see it, they hear it, they see the figures. So it, it is, uh, it is we, we hope that we're going to be able to have a great day. We hope that we can bring them to a court meeting and uh, if they could schedule uh, the school systems could schedule those young people here on the day we had one. That's been our problem that we've had. But uh, it just. But I got one thing I'd like to say before we leave. I'd like to thank your staff for what a good job they do. And 
Chick and me both have a problem with our parks. Chick, I sympathize for you, and I hope you can get something resolved, too, on your park. We've got the same problem at Phelps, and I hope you'll keep them people in mind. we got to relocate we are, our little we are park what? there. And uh, I met with, with the school board last week, and it don't look good. And whatever you can say or do, you know, we, we probably will have to relocate that little park Talk somewhere. With Magistrate Johnson, I talked with him. I talked with Magistrate Johnson, and the the session, the veto session ends, Bobby, on the 15th, and then we'll know exactly what's in the legislation. Now, we know what's come out of the House and Senate, but we will know what the budget has in it. And I, t I talked to Magistrate Johnson, and that's going to be on the agenda to try to solve that problem and, to, to, and also to try to solve the problem that we have where they left the dead on us on the, on the, the, on the courthouse. That will be on the agenda. The next meeting after the governor has the veto session and after the Kentucky General Assembly, Bobby goes signing I. Also, Judge, uh, Jimmy Dale and, and, and Jimmy Kaiser were over that way today looking at some illegal dumps, you know, Pride uh, Month is coming in today or tomorrow, wasn't it, uh, Jimmy? But they they located about four or five uh, places that needed cleaning up, and and they're working on that stuff. So that's all I have. Dan, would you pull up on the monitor so that we can give the updates and the announcements? My County Trail Ride is May 16th and 18th on. on uh, that, that, that is at Middlefield Fork, <clears throat> and, and there's the trail that's laid out. That is, that is a community effort. They have a board together. Uh, John Doug Hayes, the assistant county attorney, is, has, has chaired that board, and very active board, and they expect to have a real uh, ho great horse trail ride. Uh, we had an extension board meeting, and that's one of their horse trail rides that that they support, market, and and monitor. Our waste tar program, and we finally got the figures uh, in. Uh, Bobby Mullins, uh, your figures were 52,000 tars that finally that that was taken out of this county. We were worried that they was going to be here a while, and we asked the fellow from Frankfurt, Commissioner Mullins, and I did, and said. We don't want these here because we don't want to get sighted. If it rains on them, it runs in the creek. He said, you won't this year. We put $500 a day uh, penalty on the company after 10 days if they're not moved. He, he was right. They're all gone. But uh, what, a, what a, that is, the, the Tri-State Steam Excursion, we know that all 3,000 tickets, and uh, Bobby Mullins, want to thank you and your staff for for. Uh, helping clean up the 11 miles uh, where you come into Pike County in Kentucky. And it didn't look good when when uh, Charles Carlton and all of us was over there and looked at it. There was a big garbage dump right over on the track. And we don't want these 3,000 guests to see see that. And that understand that garbage dump is gone, been cleaned up, and that we have talked to the property owners around the railroad track over there on that side and also cleaned it up so that so that those 3,000 visitors, uh, I was told by the by the tourism board that the, that they had received a call last week from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Bobby wanting ticket for that steam trail ride. So it's the, the tickets are sold. They sold the first ones in 72 hours. They sold the second ones in 72 hours. Next Hillbilly Day is coming up. That is a Pike County Festival. We couldn't have it without the partnership of the city of Pikeville and the chamber because it takes a lot of volunteers. But it takes, we have more input in than that from county government, it being a county festival. And, and it is a, a opportunity for us to showcase Pikeville and Pike County. So we're ready, code red. 
they have for you all to take back to your offices today. The applications for Code Red, they're easy to fill out, easy to access. Doug, they can do that on the internet by telephone or mail, any way they want to. But uh, what an opportunity it is to take advantage of that. Uh, like we have free tax preparation in the basement of the courthouse. I think I'm correct in that uh, for people that can't afford it. So that's, we made an office available again this year. Uh, Artist Collaborative Theater, uh, 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 Magistrate Harris and Magistrate Dodson and related to that today and the upcoming uh, through their Arts Council that they will be that they will be looking for people to take part in the production this year. So this is or anything else on that 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 ends that. Now it's time for the commissioners and directors and others that has any questions. And I'll ask you, Donella, do you have any questions of, of the court while they're in session? If not, we'll move on to Carl. Carl, do you have any statements? Finance Director Charles Carlton. Uh, Bobby Mullins and uh, Doug, Paul, thank you for, for what you do. We, uh, we had just a brief meeting this morning in, in regard to our security where we've lost so much over to County Garage. And Paul and Carl is working on a, a scenario, if it works out, we can have a county employee living on that site. When Mr. Justice was living, for 15 years, we didn't lose one thing over there. So hopefully we can get back to that and, and <coughs> save the taxpayers money. So uh, we hope that works. So Hatch, I said, is sick, he'll be back. Uh, uh, he said in the morning, he, he reported this morning that he's feeling a lot better and, and uh, would, would be available to magistrates in our office need him in the morning. Uh, Dan? Thank you for what you do. Do you have any questions of anything while the magistrates are here? Bobby, do you have anything else? Uh, now, and the fellow sitting beside of him is just as important as anybody else here, including us, because of what we do in regard to protecting our floodplain and, and also what we've been trying to get done in regard to these premiums on flood insurance. And we're going to continue to pursue that bring back to this body for some action to try to lower those, even though Congress has acted uh, recently on the Biggers and Waters Act. So you can, well, you can expect us to continue to work on that. So if, if Jeannie, I guess you're the next one. Do you have anything that you need from the court as a body? Shane, I want to thank you for representing the county attorney's office and, uh, and certainly glad to have you with us and the attention and understanding that you, that, uh, you brought in our meetings. Thank Andrew. you, Judge, for having me. If nothing else, I have a motion thank to you. adjourn. I have a motion, Master Johnson, Secretary Master Robinson, and uh, everybody stand up. It's in favor of it.